Dave Chappelle has endorsed Andrew Yang and recently there was a campaign video featuring Chappelle and his reasoning for why he feels Yang is the best candidate to represent the country. Now, let me just warn you guys, Chappelle has gotten a lot of backlash for what he says in this video. I'm really not interested in trashing Chappelle, but I do want to talk about the argument that he makes here and just kind of dissect it with some facts and some statistics. With that said, let's take a look. You would take a poll in Dayton and say, what would you rather have, $12,000 a year or health insurance? Everyone's taking the money. But like health insurance is great, but, but groceries are necessary too. And people in Dayton are having a hard time getting the things they need. I started imagining what a universal basic income would do for my community, and it would save it almost instantly. You know, we recently suffered, you know, mass shootings and all kinds of everything that happens in the news happens in our backyard in Dayton, the opioid epidemic, all of these things. And uh, I like the idea of giving people choices, putting the money in their hands and giving them the choice. They would consider things that they that aren't even an option to consider now. And they can do things that aren't an option to do. And that part of his platform I found incredibly exciting. So there's so much to say about mm-hmm. in response to the argument made by Chappelle. Again, I'm not interested in trashing him, but I do think that We as Americans have been conditioned for such a long time to just be happy with the crumbs that we're given that we think that we have to choose between putting food on the table for our children or having a healthcare system that isn't broken. We live in one of the richest countries in the world. We work incredibly hard, we're more productive every year and we get less in return every year. Mm -hmm. And so I think that this, this like false choice that's being presented there is it's it's wrong mm-hmm. and I, I don't think that and even if you do have that false choice right if you do have to choose between $12,000 a year he's referring to uh, Andrew Yang's universal basic income proposal or healthcare look healthcare is i mean the system is so broken that Almost every single American, with the exception of those at the very top of the economic ladder, mm-hmm. uh, have suffered the consequences of this broken uh, healthcare system. And so, just to give you a few statistics, real quick, um, half a million Americans go bankrupt every single year from medical bills. Half a million Americans in the richest country in the world. A study from the Harvard School of Medicine says that 45,000 people die every year due to a lack of health insurance and therefore a lack of access to ongoing medical care for a wide variety of treatable conditions. Also, the study conducted at Harvard Medical School and Cambridge Health Alliance found that uninsured working age Americans have a 40% higher risk of death than their privately insured counterparts up from 25% excess death rate found in 1993. So it actually gets worse every year, every decade, and we shouldn't be given this false choice. I don't have a problem with universal basic income. I do have a problem with turning to that as the problem solver for everything. Mm-hmm. It's not going to significantly improve the quality of lot of Americans lives. Is it going to help? Yes, absolutely. But I think that we need a more comprehensive approach. And the way that Andrew Yang's policy is being proposed, it's not comprehensive enough to address all of the things that Americans are really struggling with. Mm-hmm. So that's that's where I'm where I stand on it. Yeah, I, I have a few issues with it. I, I mean, the starting point that that Dave Chappelle seems to have is concern for people, mm-hmm. and I admire that. I disagree with some of where he goes from there, but fundamentally, he does care about people, and he's supporting a candidate that he thinks is going to make the situation better for them. Um, I just I, I I will buttress your point. Uh, One of the best things about Andrew Yang running is that 50 times as many people know what universal basic income is before. But I hope that they don't come out of his candidacy thinking that all of the things that that Yang or his implementation of universal basic income, which is just one way to do it. Mm -hmm. It is not universal basic income, it's a form of universal basic income. It does not have to be at the expense of these other things. There is no reason why universal basic income couldn't be added on to single payer healthcare, Mm -hmm. guaranteed employment, right to housing, all those sorts of things. He has a philosophy that he has embedded UBI in. It's not the only way to do it. And I also, like, first of all, it's not gonna be $12,000 a year. It will, of course, be taxed. You lose some money to that. Right. And then for some people, 
If you don't have a lot of healthcare costs, then you'll be up financially from having the money instead. But for a lot of people, that's barely gonna cut into dealing with your heart attack or God knows what medication. And the thing is, that's why we shouldn't be having this conversation about one or the other. There's no reason why it has to be one or the other. Absolutely. And, yeah. and the thing is, I don't even know to what extent the way that Dave is expressing it is necessarily the way that Andrew Yang wants it to be talked about. And it's not like he doesn't have a healthcare plan, he does. Mm -hmm. It's just not. Previously, what he talked about is Medicare for all. He's right. not interested in it's that anymore. It's not as robust as <clears throat> what um, Bernie Sanders is proposing. And by the way, at this point, um, it's 100% confirmed. In a recent interview with NPR, Elizabeth Warren made it clear that she is in favor of a public option as opposed to Medicare for all. I'm just saying that because when we say that Bernie Sanders is the only candidate for Medicare for all, he genuinely is. Now, Yang, um, look, I, I think that universal basic income is a great proposal and I think that Yang as a candidate has been fascinating. He's brought important issues to the table. I think that he's made the you know Democratic primaries a lot more interesting. And I my hope is that candidates learn from one another, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that universal basic income can be super helpful in a robust systemic change where you address all the other issues, including housing, including healthcare. And you're right, we don't know if, if Andrew Yang is in favor of the type of messaging that was portrayed in that Chappelle video. But what I do know is that we as Americans, as average Americans, people in the working class and the middle class, we need to fight back and push back against this narrative where people expect us to be happy with um, a little bit of change or uh, maybe changing policy when it comes to one area. Like, no, we produce a lot in this country mm. and there's a lot of wealth in this country. The problem is that the system makes it so it's not distributed properly. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's what I, I think we need to address. And it needs to be a systemic change, not you know, one policy or the other. Yeah. Yeah. And uh yeah, like I don't they're obviously they're not they're not enemies, Sanders and Yang. Like right. Yang was just talking about potentially his supporters maybe supporting Bernie in Iowa if he doesn't reach the threshold, which it looks like at this point he won't. Like there there is some ideological overlap, but and and they are similar on some issues, but they're obviously their their approach to governance, their political philosophy is very different. Mm -hmm, I don't want to oversimplify anything, and I've made clear you know where my allegiance lies. Obviously, I've already endorsed Bernie Sanders, so take everything I say about other candidates with a grain of salt. But that's what I think. Don't miss your chance to win a trip to Los Angeles and have dinner with Jank, John, and me. Just head to tyt.com slash dinner in LA to register to win. Sign up for a free aspiration spend and save account. Then you just register your eligibility and swipe your aspiration card daily on purchases to gain entries. Not only are you entering to win a trip to Los Angeles and dinner with TYT hosts, you're also not depositing your hard earned money into fossil fuel exploration or production. As a friendly reminder, even if you already have an aspiration account, you must still register for eligibility into the sweepstakes.